Did you know that everybody is an evangelist? Let me ask that question again. Did you know that everybody is already an evangelist? Well, good afternoon, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Father God, as we talk about your glorious word, your glorious grace, your glorious redemption, we ask that you would empower the, the speaker to say that which is pleasing in your sight and encouraging to your saints. You are a wonderful God in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, good afternoon again. Uh, I've been doing a series on evangelism. I hope it's been somewhat of a blessing. The, the sermon on Gideon wasn't so much of evangelism, but it really is, in essence, part of it. It's, it's, it's about the fact that God used that man Gideon to, to change the world around him. So um, the, the, this, this, this series of evangelism is going to take on a life of its own. I can see that because the verse that I was about to, uh, I'm about to bring forth is really not a passage that I had thought about in light of evangelism, but there's so much in the Bible. Hey man, it, it's a treasure trove. I would like to say this though. If you looked at the thumbnail, you see that I wrote stock market, Trump, LeBron James and Biden. And I put everybody is already an evangelist. Evangelism. Not, not the biblical specific term, but think of this. People talk passionately about Trump, don't they? Woo! They talk passionately about Biden. Some people talk passionately about LeBron James. Some people talk passionately about the stock market. They talk about it with a certain level of enthusiasm, a certain level of energy. The energy is not regular. It is, is hyper this is true. People talk about their their hobbies, their bowling league, their fishing. Some people talk about their grandchildren, the, their, their children graduating. They talk about these vacations. What I mean to say is that everybody is evangelizing because of some personal experience, something that they particularly love. Amen? See, people may evangelize about the, the sale at, at Macy's or Amazon. They may evangelize about the, the political party that they love, but they speak with authority. They speak with certainty. They speak with, 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 with passion about certain subjects, certain people, certain issues. So I think that, that we sometimes we miss the fact that people are evangelizing. It's just not about Jesus. But people have a passion, they have a knowledge, they have a, a reservoir of information, and they communicate it with a certain level of authority, certainty, that, that, that compels others. That whether we agree or not, we know that they are enthused about what they're speaking about. Amen. So now I want to fast forward to this verse. Because evangelism can be made more confusing than it needs to be. Let me say that again. Evangelism can be made more confusing than it needs to be. I don't want, I'm going to re, I'm going to revisit some passages, but understand this about evangelism. We can make all types of definitions, but we want to look at what the Bible actually says about evangelism. Now we know, go make disciples of all nations. Amen. But let me also bring out another scenario. There's a woman at a well. She says, come meet a man who told me all I ever did. This woman, we don't know the depth of her theological knowledge. We don't know how much she understood. It doesn't look like she understood a lot. But apparently her personal encounter with Jesus Dare I say this again? Her personal encounter with Jesus, with Jesus, was so compelling, was so compelling that guess what happened? Others came to hear Jesus because of what she said. Now, was she the perfect evangelist? But I will say this, that she has done much more than many of us have done. She has done much more than many of us 
have done that in her presentation of Jesus to others, they may not have known the complete gospel, but they were willing to hear Jesus for themselves. See, many times we speak and we have pushed people away from hearing any more about the Bible. But that's not the passage. But what I wanted to do was open your, your hearts and minds to understand that this idea of evangelism can be made more complicated. It can be made more difficult than we really see if we look at scripture and all the ways that God uses it. Now, some may want to say, well, that's not the technical definition of evangelism. Evangelism is the clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me say this again, because of the woman's presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ with her limited knowledge, but unlimited passion, no doubt, with her, her limited information, but her overwhelming enthusiasm about what has just transpired, guess what happens? People come to listen to Jesus. Amen? Amen. See, this, this passage here of the woman in the well is, is really the introduction of what I'm going to bring up. I want to tell you that you are already equipped to evangelize. You're already equipped. I know you may not know all of the theology. You may not know all of the doctrinal principles that need to be uh, perfectly articulated in the view of some. But I want to tell you what Jesus now, Jesus didn't command the woman to go tell people. She did that own, which is a whole nother sermon. We're going to have to revisit that passage. Amen. Didn't even, didn't even plan to bring that up, but it was brought up. Just came to mind. So look at Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus has just cast out demons from a man. But look at what Jesus says to the man. Now, the man wants to stay with Jesus. The man has been so blessed. His deliverance is so magnificent that he does not want to leave the side of Jesus. But it says in Mark chapter 5, 19, however, Jesus did not permit him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them, oh, you know where we're going. You know where we're going. I'm already pumped up. I'm excited. Glory to God. Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Now let's take the first part. See, if God has done something great in your life, if Jesus has been extra, extraordinarily good to you, you probably got something to tell somebody about the Savior. See, if God has done something in the life of your son, your daughter, your uncle, has God has done something in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, glory to God. Now, you may not have been delivered from demons. That's another subject and another sermon. But notice, he's saying, tell what great things. See, that's an open-ended passage for us, the believer in Jesus. What great things God has done. Now, please understand this. When God has done something great in somebody's life, they speak greatly about it. Did I say it? I said it. When God does something greatly in somebody's life, they speak greatly about it. See the passion that people have for politics, for sports, for finances, that, that passion. See, when God has done something great in somebody's life, see, let me explain this, 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 this concept here clearly. As a preacher, as a preacher, I'm fully aware when the Spirit of God has put something in me to say with a different level of of enthusiasm, passion, and fire, then simply during the week, choosing a passage, reading several commentaries, getting some pertinent facts, and they may be a blessing to people. Don't get me wrong. They may be a blessing to people, and people may because the blessing is on the word of God. But it is nice. I'll say this as a preacher, and I'm sure you have felt the same thing if you've walked with Jesus for any time, that you open up the Bible and something just grabs you. It just grabs you and takes hold of your mind, body, soul, and spirit, and you know the Lord's got something for you in that passage. You know that verse is, is ringing with celestial truth. So what I liked about this, I hadn't planned on bringing this up, but I, it just came to mind. I hadn't even been reading Mark, but it just, it remind, the, the Lord reminded me of this passage. Did I say the Lord, amen. Go home to your friends and tell them what great things. See, that's the testimony. 
that, like that, like the blind man. I, I don't know all about all about prophets and who's a prophet and whether the man's a sinner or not. I was blind and now I see. I was blind and now I see. See if you have had experience of the greatness of God, the the majesty of God, the power of God, the supernatural intervention of the living God into your mortal affairs to change your life, you got something to tell somebody about. See, what's different about this is you're not pointing out their sin. You're not pointing out their failure. You're pointing out the greatness of God in your own life. Oh, you got to love it. Forgive my excitement. But see, this is evangelism. This is why Jesus says, be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. See, when you talk about your own goodness, when you talk about the goodness of God, your, your, the own goodness that you experience from God, you don't have to be consumed with, let me show them how they've broken the commandments. You're too busy talking about how great God has been for you. Amen. Amen. And what I like is, he doesn't specifically say, tell how the demons were removed, which gives us liberty to talk about the great things that Jesus, that the Holy Spirit, the living God has done in our life. Woo, you know, I'm feeling pretty good today. Now notice this. He even tells them where to go. Go to your friends. Tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. But now notice this. And how he has had compassion on you. Amazing how now we have the motivation, the information for communication. Amen. Has the Lord had compassion on you? Has the Lord has mercy on you? Ha, ha, has the Lord ever shown you such, such loving kindness that it brought you to tears? Amen. See, we need to, when, when, we're, when we're still, be still and know that I am God. When we're still, the Spirit may come upon us. See, there's an evangelism that we could do. I know I do it. It's, it's okay to give out literature. Amen. I, I, I set up a table, give out Bibles, give out literature, and amen. And I hope, I, I look at that as, as that literature gets in somebody's house and the Lord may bless that literature uh, when somebody reads it. Amen. But there's also when we know the Spirit of God is upon us, when we know that we have something to tell somebody about that's going to encourage them, that's going to make them want to know Jesus just a little bit more than they did yesterday. That they're going to sense that Jesus is working in you in a way that cannot be duplicated by simple information and communication of biblical facts without personal experience. Let me say that again. There's a way that we can communicate biblical facts without personal experience and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that we're arguing about a doctrine, we're talking about a doctrine, we're preaching about a doctrine, but we have not experienced that divine doctrine at work in our life so we could say, let me tell you about the goodness of God. Let me tell you about the mercy that cleanses from sin, that restores broken lives, that heals broken hearts. Oh, yes. See, but when you got that kind of compassion, when you've experienced this, I'm going to I'm going to take a liberty with the scripture. I'm going to take a liberty with the scripture. Jesus says, "He who has been forgiven much loves much." I would imagine that the person who's forgiven much not only loves much, but it's easy for them to evangelize much because they're focused on how good God has been to them and they come to people with a whole different atmosphere, a whole different context of where they begin their evangelistic presentation. Woo! Everybody's an evangelist. Whether it's LeBron James and who's the greatest player, whether it's Trump Biden, everybody got something to say. They believe, oh, this political party will change the nation. Well, I got news for you. The people who know God, the people who know Jesus, the people who've been infused with Holy Ghost fire should be able to communicate with a level of authority, certainty, 
passion, with the level of encouragement, the great things God has done in their life and how they've been blessed, how they've been forgiven, how they've been redeemed, how they've been reconciled, how they were once lost, but now found, once was blind, but now they see. When the Lord has, has compassion on you, you're ready to evangelize. You don't need a 14-week course. You need a personal encounter with the living God who changes a life. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you this. I know, because I write some literature, but I know that that literature could never, ever begin to replicate, imitate, or duplicate what happens to a person when God has intervened and changed their life through the nail-pierced hand. Oh, you gotta love it. You're ready to evangelize. We need to recover a, 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 a novelty. This is what Jesus means. See, another verse, another verse, not planned. You left your first love. When we remind ourselves how good Jesus is, now we're ready to evangelize. We need to get somewhere and say, Lord, remind me. Let me do those first works. Let me recover that first love. Let me recover that first fire. Let me recover that first passion. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I, I might have to go out and do some evangelism. Hey, Amen. Let me tell you something. God is good. God is good. This is what you love about Jesus. The man has just had demons cast out of him. We want to hem him up. We want to tell him he needs to be trained. We want to tell him he needs some theological information. Hey, 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 be careful now. Don't go out there. You don't really have good doctrine. You know, you're not preaching the Bible. You got to preach the whole counsel of God. Let me tell you, you could preach the whole counsel of God in such a way that it is boring, unenthusiastic, and folks are like, I don't want to hear anymore. I said it. I said it. It is, it, it, yes. But then you could preach one particular truth. One particular truth, one gem. You could talk about one event that God did for you and people want to hear it over and over again. Amen. Let me tell you, the word of God, the word of God is not dull, but John Davis can make it dull. The word of God is not unexciting, but John Davis can make it boring. Let me tell you this. This man had a fire. Jesus gave this man authority to go tell people about his goodness in this man's life. Amen. And when Jesus gives authority, I dare not get in the way. We could, we could tell people, oh, you got to know. You got to know the, the Romans road, the four spiritual laws. You got to know and all the other evangelistic programs out there. I do not think when I preach this that I'm giving you a program. I'm just trying to hopefully bring to light some passages to show that you're equipped. If you, if you had some mercy in your life, you're equipped. If you've had some goodness in your life, if the living God has poured some grace, if he's redeemed you from some dark places, if he's, if he's healed you of some brokenness, you got something to tell somebody about. This is what it means to Corinthians. Comfort others the way you've been comforted. Amen. That's not just for believers. Imagine if we can actually, if we could actually somehow empathize with others because of the goodness of God, others who do not know Jesus, if we could empathize in their brokenness, oh Lord, the audience we would have. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Don't want to stop. Great things. I hope you've had great things. See, there's a way when the spirit comes upon a person that the Lord will speak to them. Lord Jesus. This man, as far as we know, right now, we don't know any other theological training, any other doctrinal information he had. But he had a personal encounter with the living God that was so life transforming that Jesus had confidence for the man to go and start talking about what God did in his life. See, Jesus empowers people. He doesn't slow them down because he knows that the living God is at work. He knows the Holy Spirit. See, we sometimes forget 
that that when when God is in something, first of all, understand this. If this was going to be perfect, we would not be involved. Amen. If God wanted perfect communication, let me let me let me say this so we can understand. When we hear people talk about someone is not properly communicating the gospel, it may mean sometimes that we think we always properly communicate the gospel. It may mean that, not always, but it may mean that we have an assumption that we know how to communicate the gospel better than others. But I'll tell you this, that woman, people came to hear Jesus. Amen? Oh, that's that's results. Now, some people don't like a, a result-oriented evangelism. Oh, I, I don't want to get started. They don't want a result-oriented evangelism. And don't worry, because some of us are getting no results. Amen? We're getting none. We're getting none. So you don't have to worry about a result-oriented evangelism. But that woman said something, and for what we see, just come meet a man. Come tell people about, meet the God who did great things for me. Meet the Savior who redeemed me. Meet the Holy Spirit who empowers me. Amen? See, see I, I love this. You got to love it. The Bible's got so much. Who knows how many more sermons will be coming out? I, I hope you're blessed. You are equipped to evangelize. People talk about the stock market. They're not stockbrokers. People talk about LeBron James. They're not basketball players. People talk about Trump and Biden. Let me tell you something. Oh, let me tell you. They're, they're, they're not in only political office. But if you've had an experience with the living God, if you've had an experience with the, with the mighty Savior, if you've had the power of the Holy Spirit descend upon your life, you're ready. You're ready. And notice what you what great things has the Lord done for you. Don't start going into things you don't understand. Don't start asking, don't start trying to preach out of Leviticus, brother, sister. Leave First Chronicles alone. Uh, it, it's a great book, and if the Lord tells you to use it, then use it. But you surely could speak with authority about what God has done for you. You surely could speak with absolute authority about how the Lord has had mercy on you. You don't have to second guess your interpretation about the compassion of Jesus. You will be theologically equipped to be an evangelist. You be blessed in Jesus. My brother and sister, go forward in some power in the knowledge that God has done great things for you, he will do great things for you. He has had great compassion on you. And now you're equipped to tell some folks how good Jesus is. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God.